in Cameroon, internal wrangling in separatist leaderships complicates end to the Anglophone crisis, while denizens of the English-speaking Northwest and Southwest regions are desperately hoping and praying for a return to normalcy, their supposed leaders are wrangling for power. Former frontline actors are switching camp, while others are seeking presidential powers. After the arrest of primary self-proclaimed Ambazonia President Sisiko Ayuktabe in 2019, Samuel Ikome Sako took over as interim of the Ambazonia state, and now it's Chris Anu who is self-proclaiming himself as president of the state Ambazonia. At a moment where schools have resumed and many of these students in the northwest and southwest regions still fear going to school and some are still threatened not to go to school, we have uh, these up. Uh, we have some of the frontline uh, actors and activists who are now changing sides and calling for the resumption, the peaceful resumption of uh, school. And uh, Eric Tato, particularly uh, with his uh, with Bag Barretta, are uh, urging that these separatist fighters should enable these uh, students to go back to school. We are now looking at the state where former frontliners are uh, switching position. When the, the struggle for an independent state, some say that they are trying to switch position to fear, for fear of their arrest by the International Criminal Court, whose uh, prosecutor has called for the arrest of all those that were involved in uh, these separatist fights uh, from the onset. Now, is uh, Mark Barretta and uh, Eric Tato, are they going to succeed with their call for their se separatist uh, partners to drop their guns and let the students go to school? We are going to look at this in today's edition of the Pan-African Debate and equally analyze the impact of the previous leaderships of uh, President Sisiko Ayuk Tabe and uh, equally Samuel Ikome. What has been the impact of their leadership in these English-speaking regions and what is going to be the impact of uh, uh, Chris Anu who takes over the leadership of uh, these parts of the country? Stay with us, dear televiewers. This is the Pan-African Debate. A pleasure to know you're always tuned to your Pan-African television, this 3 p.m. local time, 14 hours, GMT, I close the group. And uh, this is the Pan-African debate. This day, we are looking at the internal wrangling in the separatist leadership, complicating the end to the Anglophone crisis, a crisis which started since 2016, complicated from 2017, and uh, this is 2022. Some of the frontline leaders, our activists, separatist activists, are calling for a return to normalcy while others think this is time for them now to take up over the authority and the presidency of uh, this uh, uh, state Ambazonia. So today in the company of our fellow uh, guests, we shall be analyzing the impact of uh, this uh, leadership or the leadership of the various persons uh, ruling over the Ambazonia state and also see what best is needed to be done in order to bring back to normalcy the peace and stability in the English-speaking Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon. By beginning in this two hours interactive program, I would like to welcome into the studio uh, our guest. He's coming here for the first time. We have you, Song Derek. You are a political analyst. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Um, greetings to my co panelists. Uh, uh, special greetings to all Africans, especially those who are interested in the uh, Pan African debate. It's a pleasure to be here, and we think that uh, we are going to share our best uh, talk about the happenings in Cameroon and Africa at large. And uh, with your permission and your coordination, uh, we do tell the listeners that it's going to be a tough and fruitful debate. Thank you very much, Song Derek, for being with us this afternoon. We equally have in the studio, Diwum Emmanuel. You <coughs> are the co-founder of uh, the New Era for uh, New Era Youth for Africa. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Rita Moto Sony. I hope I pronounced it well. Correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, it's always a pleasure to be on this um, 
prestigious platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it a continental debate, and I call it a continental laboratory. I know. <laughs> this is a laboratory where African problems are x-rays. Those that need surgery, we <laughs> offer them surgery in this debate. Those that need ironing, we iron, we them, iron out them out. Debate. <laughs> and those that need sorting, we sort them we out. We sort them out. I must say I'm pleased to join uh, my friend and brother, Song Derek, mm -hmm. whom uh, I think is going to be a very good ride for the next two hours. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much, uh, Ndiwo Emmanuel, for uh, your presence in the studio this afternoon. Let's also take via video link, Elijah Enuaku. You are a researcher with Leeds University on African Development. Welcome to the Pan-African Debate. Uh, thank you, Rita, and thank you to uh, fellow listeners all over the world. Um, hopefully, we're going to have um, some sort of a microcosm of what's happening in Cameroon. It might appear that this is Cameroon, but what is happening in Cameroon, it's a typical situation of what is happening in so many other African countries. So what happens in Cameroon would automatically apply to so many other parts of Africa that we're going to be talking about. So. Hopefully we can have a fruitful debate and have a discussion that the powers that be can listen and listen attentively and have some ideas on how to resolve some of these problems. So thanks for having me. Cool. Joining us. This is the Pan-African Debate, dear televiewers. We are going for two hours. It's interactive. You can drop your contributions on our Facebook live page, which is streaming already. So now getting to uh, hear from you, Mr. Song Derek, we have this wrangling of power within uh, uh, separatist fighters or separatist leaders. We don't know what's happening at this point in time. Why, how can there be any uh, peace or how can there be any return to normalcy when uh, we have uh, these leaders themselves who are fighting between themselves or among themselves for leadership position. And we get to feel like there is no thought of the people first. It is powers first. What do you think? Yeah, thank you very much, um, <coughs> Rita Moto, for of that tough one. Uh, so you would bear with me that um, one of the greatest <laughs> problems, one of the greatest hits we have had with the Anglophone crisis and the Anglophone war in uh, Cameroon is the fact that there is inability to install confidence and trust. And the inability to install this confidence and trust has led to infighting, backbiting, pointing of fingers, threats, which are clear signs. And this is only a way of shooting the Anglophone uh, or the Ambazonia war on the leg because we are beginning to realize and we are beginning to see some signs that there is more fight for power than fight for the people. And if you want to create a nation, the moment you want to create a nation, if the interest of the people is not put in front, then there will always be that question of who you are fighting for. Mm -hmm. And that is why from the fall or from the arrest of... Uh, uh, Ayuk Tabe, Sisiko, Tasang, and Co. Mm -hmm. uh, they were arrested in 2019 yeah. and ferried to Yaoundé. Uh, I can tell you that at the beginning, the division in the faction of the Anglophone was an advantage. It played to the advantage at the beginning of the crisis because it, 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 it confused the Yaoundé government on who to target. Okay. But after the arrest of Sisiko, which is what uh, orchestrated the, 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 the revolution to be, to be where it is. Because when Yaoundé was arresting Sisiko, in their mind, they, they thought that the crisis was going to be to come over to yeah. the fortnight. But the moment they arrested Sisiko, it gave birth to more radicals. That is when we started hearing about the Ayabacholukas, the Derek Ebenezers, Akwangas, and the likes. But however, in recent time, in recent days, we are beginning to see that Within the same faction of, of, the, of the separatists, there's a lot of infighting, there's a lot of backbiting, there's a lot of finger pointing, there's a lot of threats. Mm -hmm. And if the citizens' position, if the citizens' interests are not put 
in front, then the revolution may have uh, a scratch anytime soon. But nonetheless, it is still no guarantee that things might be over anytime soon. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Song Derek, for your first take. Let's uh, have Mr. Ndiwu. Mr. Ndiwu, what's your impression about uh, uh, this whole internal wrangling over the leadership of the Anglophone Cameroon? Uh, <clears throat> I want to start by paraphrasing the words of one time uh, United States under, uh, under Secretary of State for Africa, Tibonagi. Yeah on one of the most favorite programs, 90 Minutes in Africa. This is what he said. Those we call terrorists are someone's freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. He went further to say that Anglophone activists or those who are at the forefront have failed to unite their voices together. And that is why uh, there should be no hope in the nearest future for any international uh, community to step in. And that the only way for these people to make their voices heard is to I speak with one it. voice. I add my voice to him to say that there is a common saying near to wisdom that when spider webs unite, they catch a lion. <laughs> I want to say it, and I want to send it to the Ebenezer Akongas, the Mark Baristas, the Tapa Ivors, the Eric Tatos, and the rest. You people have failed to form that cobweb that could unite to bring down the lion. And the lion is very happy from a distance, watching you people fighting within yourselves. Uh, I am not a man of God, but I want to say, biblically, it is also said, when you want to kill your family, mm -hmm. start an infighting. Your, your empire only fails if you started pushing it towards failure. These guys have failed. But it is worth noting that no normal Anglophone from southern Cameroon shall ever distance his or herself from the cause. They have bypassed the cause, but we are still standing by the cause. Mm -hmm. And the cause shall attract the due attention from whosoever matters in this affair. They have by bypassed the cause. Why? It is a fact that cannot be disputed, no disputed, mm -hmm. that many armed groups have reached a genuine case and turned it into a money scamming event exactly. because most of them are scammers. But that does not stop the fact that the genuity of the Anglophone crisis, the suffering that the Anglophone man of Southern Cameroon has suffered for 40 years, no, 60 years, but the worst is within the, the period of 1982 okay. and 2022. That's the worst time a southern Cameroon has suffered. They have bypassed the pain of the people to enrich and fill their bank account. That is why people could be paid to cut up people's fingers. That is why children could be butchered for private and personal gains. That is why destruction that is why settling of scores has taken center stage if somebody left cameroon knowing that the father had a problem with a neighbor mm -hmm. this is a fatal moment for them to the settle their scores. scores that said i want to tell you that the internal wrangling there uh these guys i don't know who they represent but we still believe that there are people who believe in the genuine cost of the southern cameroonians or call it anglophone cause mm -hmm. that are still in the diaspora so it is not every diaspora that is a scammer most of them who are at the forefront are thieves we should be saying it loud and clear you cannot be enjoying in a swimming pool in u.s and you call back home 
that people's heads and hands should be chopped off. Mm -hmm. We know it is war, and in war, everything that is sad is a reality. It is normal. But if you can order that people should be killed, and the people are being killed, and you are sending us on Facebook, your bank account, the number of shops you have erected, the number of businesses you have multiplied, it means you were never fighting for the people, you were fighting for yourself. But then how do we get here? You know, we have a government that is very tricky. The government played a role in these internal wranglings that is happening or that is going on between the southern Cameroonians who have come up, everybody is claiming to... In fact, this is the only struggle that you have 10 presidents installed within uh, the 12 months of a year. And yet, you don't know who is the real president. <clears throat> now, how did we get here? You know, Yaoundé is very tricky. From the beginning, Yaoundé started asking, who should I dialogue with? Mm -hmm. And I started asking the question, who were you fighting with? <laughs> how can you be asking whom to dialogue with Whereas you have somebody to fight with. Who showed you where Ayuk Tabe and the co were? Because I think at that initial stage, these guys were still, they still had some credibility to discuss and put an end amicably to this thing. Because the Yaoundé government saw in it an opportunity for some of their ex-convicts to be appointed somewhere for some of them to gain and enrich themselves, mm -hmm. they played the delay tactic and it landed us where we are today. Now, you will equally discover that where we are today, those cameras we have abroad, they keep multiplying. Why are they multiplying? They have discovered that the government is eating fat from this crisis. Some government officials, let me not say, let me not be blunt. The, yeah. Some government officials who have special trips to Norway and Southway, but they, they have never been to the suburbs of this area. They end at the Ayaba Hotel. They end at Mountain Hotel. They, they, they are paid eh, for work not done. And again, you discover that as time goes, these fake diaspora scammers multiply. Mm -hmm. You even have some of them today who pride themselves that they are representing diaspora. And when you ask them the question, which of the diaspora are you representing? Are you representing Yaoundé diaspora or Cameroon diaspora? They turn to insult. We ask them, who voted you and where? How can you become a representative of somebody who has refused to be represented back in Cameroon? Mm -hmm. Yet, you are being paid a flight to ferry to Cameroon at any time, make noise everywhere in the public areas you are representing. So you see that we are caught in a dark web because as others discover that they delay is filling the accounts of some people, mm -hmm. they want that it should delay further so that they should keep representing fake diaspora. I remember, I, I, I mentioned fake in a very loud voice because when you reach out to this diaspora, they distance themselves from the so-called uh, uh, diaspora representative. And I call them amber beneficiaries that are benefiting from this crisis. So it will be difficult. Okay. Thank you. Uh Mr. Ndiwun for that take. Let's uh, hear from you, Mr. Elijah. We have Eric, uh, Tat Eric Tato, who used to be, or we don't know if we would say he used to be, or he is a frontliner, but we will say now that he used to be because we are getting to see him change size. Eric Tato is saying uh, that individuals are hiding abroad and ruining the future of students down here, and he's calling an end to such hypocrisy. But now we don't know. Many think uh, some people think that uh, it's the right thing to do since the government has been calling for these separatist leaders to to change their mind and to come back to reasonable decisions. Uh, some are saying this is a, a good idea or it's a good news, while others think that he's just trying to cleanse his image by changing sides. What's your own opinion, Mr. Elijah? Um, Rita, let me, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Director, I need feedback in the studio. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Five on five. All right. All right. 
So let me begin. Okay. okay, let me begin by saying that I'm not going to stand here by the name on camera. He's not worthy of me calling his name. So I'm not going to go there. I refuse to go there. These are individuals that are decimated the Southern Cameroon economy. These are individuals that have destroyed everything we had as our heritage. So I'm not going to dignify them by calling their name on TV. They don't deserve that. They don't deserve that. Let me answer the question that you have on the screen. That's why what I want to do, you ask the question, leadership does leadership, you know, uh, the internal wrangling within the separatists, does it complicate the end to the Anglophone crisis? That's what I want to deal with squarely. I want to begin by saying that the Anglophone crisis did not start in 2016. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of people that put so much emphasis on 2016. It is true that people pick up amps in 2016, but that is not where it starts. Is if this government is a government of good faith, this government would have solved this problem long, long, long ago. When Foncha resigned from the government of Paul Beer, Foncha enumerated the issues that were plaguing what the Southern Cameroon went into agreement with the Republic of Cameroon on. He enumerated what was in that preamble that was not being respected. Nobody paid attention to him. The all Anglophone movement came. The likes of Dr. Simon Munzu, who is still talking today, the likes of the content Ella, the likes of uh, uh, Samuel Etoe, the likes of uh, uh, late um, uh, Joel Etoe, they were there. They have advocated and said, look, Mr. Paul Bia and the, and the government in power. This is not what the two entities went in for. There has been abrogation of what we agreed on to come together as a nation, to form a nation based on two different heritages. There has been assimilation of one part of the country, and this is going to cause a problem. In fact, a CIA report came out saying that the Anglophone issue is a time bomb if it is not looked into. The government did not look into that. There was no separatist movement at that time. Nobody was picking up guns. Nobody was talking about shooting guns all over the street. There was no discussion about whether children are going to go to school or not. It did not end there. We had the AAC-1 and the AAC-2. They came out with a preamble and said, there is a problem in Southern Cameroon. There is systematic assimilation of the people of Southern Cameroon by the people of East Cameroon. So something needs to be done. Otherwise, this is a time bomb that is going to create problem. They presented a preamble. There was no separatist movement at that time. There was no picking of arms at that time. The government would have done something. Nobody listened. It now morphed itself into the SCNC. We have Chief Ayamba and the rest that were running around and said, please, we are talking about the force of argument and not the argument of force, which is to say, we are not picking on arms. We are not going to war. Let us talk. The Southern Cameroon is being systematically assimilated. Something needs to be done. This is the time bomb. There was no separate movement. There were no guns and there were no people in the streets. The government that be did not listen. Then you come to the consortium. The consortium spoke clearly and said, in order for the Southern Cameroon heritage to be preserved, we need to go back to the federal constitution and make sure that the heritage of Southern Cameroon is respected within a federal republic of Cameroon. Nobody listened to, nobody paid attention to them. There was no separatist movement. There were no guns on the street. So whether there is a separatist movement that is in shambles today that cannot put its house in order, that is not the question. The question is, is the government that we have, a government of good faith that sees the suffering of the people in Southern Cameroon. Do they see that there's a problem? When somebody goes on TV and say that there's no Anglophone problem, what does that tell you? The problem lies squarely with the hesitant, the recalcitrant nature of the government in power to see that there's a problem in the region and come out and say, let us solve this problem. They came out with their uh, national dialogue. 
who do they invite for the national dialogue? You can't be fighting a war with a bunch of people, and then you say you have a dialogue in order to resolve the problem, and then you put the people in jail, and you bring people who are not fighting. The people who were there in the national dialogue had nothing to say with the separatist movement. Those who were fighting were not called to that, to that meeting. And then you say you want to resolve the problem. This shows a catastrophic failure on the part of the powers that be to resolve the issue. They know what the issue is. They can resolve it. If the government of Cameroon says tomorrow that there's going to be an end to the anglophone, anglophone crisis, it's not even a crisis because that's a technical word they're using and say crisis. It's a war. It's not a crisis. It's a war. If they say that this war is going to end tomorrow, they will end it. I have made different, I've been on different TV and I've made it very clear. If you are the father of a house and one of your sons or one of your daughters, or one of the family members hits the table and say, I don't agree what's going on here. Are you going to call that daughter or that son a terrorist being banned, being jailed? No, you call him to the table. You people have a discussion and a dialogue and see how to resolve the problem. That is where the issue is. Whether there is a separatist movement or there is no separatist movement, it is an issue of bad faith on the government that be to resolve the problem. That is where we are today. These separatists, this bunch of separatists, whatever you call them, are just people taking advantage of government inability to resolve an issue and they're eating fat out of it. And I tell you, I am not going to dignify them on this TV by calling their name that this one. Who made the person that you call a leader of the Anglophone movement? Who made them? Who has given them a mandate? Nobody. It is not like we have the AAC one that people give them their mandate. AAC two, people give them their mandate. SCNC, people give them their mandate. Everybody was behind them. All these people that are raising up today and say they are leader of so-called nation or whatever it is, and then they are eating fat like you mentioned about it. That's not... What concerns me, what concerns me is, is the government that be ready to solve this problem or not. And so far as we see it, Rita, they are not ready to solve this problem. That is where the problem is right now. If they want to solve this problem tomorrow, they will do it. They have the knife and the yam to resolve this issue. Let's welcome Mr. Far Elvis into the studio. Welcome, Mr. Far. <laughs> Thanks very much. I am glad to be here today after a long while of vacation, pondering over the kangaroo system that has been in a confused and a lackadaisical manner, with no sense of direction so far, with Yaoundé as confused as the kangaroo in the forest. That notwithstanding, we start with royal greetings because we are on. <laughs> of course, my Royal Majesty Dr. Fomiki Waters of Gunoko Village, Royal Majesty the phone of Baba Uwan, the, the Royal Majesty, the phone of Baba, Wanda's Bafanji as well. But you know that um, the Royal Majesty, the phone of Mbemi Village, Jindom, but you know, we have to take holistic approach. So I have my Royal Majesty's, the Paramount Ruler of Boya, Dr. Robert Endeli, and the Royal Majesty, Manga Williams in Limbe, and a host of other traditional rulers. You see, we might soon get back to our traditional days where values were respected, guided by cultures, and the rule of law. If you look at it, well, people will say we have to go on, but it's a very catchy topic. And so greetings to the people of Gunoku who are watching us and those for the Golden Awards uh, who are watching us right away. But I think I'm glad to be here. All right, the kangaroo Fah. things must be exposed. Whether I will call them, they don't bother. Fire wants to catch, let the fire start catching with immediate effect. You started mentioning of royal greetings. I thought you'd be telling us that your mother, the queen of England, is no more and that we should sympathize with you. That is a very good question. <laughs> I said, if I have a whip, anybody who is whipping, I give you 24 on your back. I come back, I add 24 again. Second day, I give you 24. 24 times 3. Because when some persons who sit on their brains begin to lament, a pre an African president wrote requesting to be part of the funeral and it was rejected. An African president. If I, it's just because of respect for you, Mr. President. And I saw the file being rejected because they say human rights abuse, this, da, 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 Zimbabwe. Let me just say it clear. What is happening? If I die, you don't come to mourn me. You want to go and mourn somebody who caused you pain. Sometimes we are surely mad. I met a colleague of recent who told me he was in Yaoundé 
at the British Embassy showing homage, paying homage, and I said something's mad, something's wrong with your middle on Brugata. This is Queen Elizabeth that they carried the English speaking Cameroonians half baked without allowing them to learn at the level of full independence into the hands of an unholy marriage. These are the consequences, and even the Queen could not cough. If I tell you documentaries that show you what the British did to Africans, if I see somebody just by my side that you are lamenting, when your fellow brother who was next door died and you did not cry, if you are by my side, I give you a dirty punch. It is nonsensical. Kangaroo All persons right. who cry where they are not supposed to cry. When we have Africans here suffering, they are dying on the streets there, no food to eat. You are not crying over that. You have to die on someone whom you do not know. And the, that's the person who caused the pains we are here today. Africans rise very fast too. Uh -huh. Africans shall rise. <laughs> Mr. Fire Elvis, it's been a while that I had you on this platform and I'm glad to have you again. So right away, just tell us, what's the impact that this Anglophone leadership has had in charting a way out of the Anglophone crisis itself? That is a very good question. The Anglophone leadership can be defined under two perspectives. One, who made you a leader? Two, who are you leading? <laughs> Two things. When I watched on the evaluation of the National Dialogue, which was a kangaroo one, and I saw there the leader of the diaspora, Padi Asanga, I said, this is madness of the first order. How did he come about? Become a media person. I have been looking that day to today to find the criteria under which the leader to present the diaspora, because I know just where there are infractions. Already. You said internal wranglings with the separatist leaders, most of them in the diaspora. What was the modus operandi to look at one who came to Yaoundé and say he's representing the diaspora? Is that not madness? Now, on the other hand, the Eric Tatos and the Hood, whatever the case, I'll look for the names. I begin to ask myself, it is only with time that you know who is the true friend and the intention of some persons. Mm -hmm. Because while people are suffering on the ground, people are celebrating wealth. If crisis did not go on, would some of them have been there? If crisis did not go on, would some of them have been sending people to be kidnapped and the money shared with them over there? Would they have been doing fundraising from one area to another, all in the form of forming governments of about eight presidents within a period? It's manners of the first order. Now, on the part of the wranglings, let me come the other way around. It is not a taboo for wranglings to occur within particular groups when you have what we call a crisis. Mm -hmm. People should know. Because when I went to Yaoundé and another funny person in the government told me that we are looking for who to dialogue, I said that's madness. Because you know who to dialogue with. In, in, in the crisis of war, those who oppose the government, whom they call the rebel faction, you also have major rebel groups and minor rebel groups. All of them exist. Let me tell you something. If you go to Ethiopia, two main groups that we have, you have the Ethiopian People's Development Democratic Movement. Away from that, you also have the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. Two men. But away from that, you have others. You have the Afar National Democratic Party or the movement, the Amhara Democratic Movement. There are many of them. You have the Ethiopian... Uh, Somalia Democratic League, they are a host of others over nine. If you go to Sudan, South Sudan, though you have the two main groups, mm -hmm. you have nine other sub factions. Now, the difference between these ones are that they were all fighting towards a common cause. That is why, if you analyze this, I will analyze the one of the separatist leaders, we realize that most of them are there to make their money. And at the end of it, I will tell you that the main leaders we have are Seseko, Tabe, Ayuk, and Ko, who are they languishing in jail. A handful of others are playing a ping-pong game, gallivanting and robbing soldiers with their acolytes in Yaoundé, and helping to create more factions, because it is a tool Yaoundé is using. Yaoundé believe that if we break the faction just like we are creating more than 350 political parties, it reduces their concentration in fighting us. 
That's Yaounde's tool. It's working well for Yaounde. It's working well for Yaounde. Because in a war time, you only have to put in place your strategy as far as your intelligence can carry you. I will tell you that they have lost not less than 12.8 billion francs CFA in sending sacred persons within the government abroad for negotiations. Others to meet law firms in America who are also dripping their own part and say, give me money. I will know how will bring all these guys in America to book the whole body them and send over here. Foolish Yaoundé regime, they give the money. Another crooks of CPDM Accord will say, we want to go to South Africa, Germany, and do a peace talk. By the time we come back, you will see all those leaders will disappear. So everybody that is fitting fat from the money, both those within the government circle, as well as those within the diaspora. Mm -hmm. All the Dr. Nick Santos, who were first of all opponents, and I said they have repented. They have eaten fat from it. I'm sorry to tell you. They should hear me. Oh. If you are not eating now, I don't refuse. But you have eaten, you have once eaten, and your manner of approaching tells us something could be wrong somewhere. So if you look at uh, Dr. Success Kogo or Fellow Kogo, how do we call him? And the rest, uh, the other guy was fighting, well, how do we call him? Nambere, and the other rest. So what is happening? They will contribute in the internal wranglings. So while the fight is going on, other smart hoodlums move to Yaoundé and say, let me break them more and more. Give me money. I will tell you what to do. <laughs> we have their names. I will call them. Let me tell you people. Because the killing is abnormal. Because people make money out of the blood and soul of people which you must pay. Like it or not. So at the end of it, in a kangaroo confused system, they take advantage of the internal wranglings. Do you know that away from these factions who self proclaimed or auto proclaimed themselves as leaders, one of the most common, the most, the, the, the most comedian one was that of Chris Anu. He's watching me now. And I ask myself, is this the comedy revolution we now have? That people could be dying and they are forming more government instead of them saying, if we have Ayub Tabi Sezeko and the rest, how do we bail them out from prison? Which quarters do we meet to say, let dialogue be initiated? That is why Yaoundé too is smart. Because of the factions, Yaoundé disguised and say, no, we have dialogue, but who do we dialogue with? Whereas in every war, with the intelligentsia Yaoundé has, even if the factions are broken to 50, they know all of the 50 to meet. More than myself here, because they have all it takes. So at the end of it, on both sides, they are making their money while people are brutally murdered. Violent soldiers, the other day, Ekona Moyoka, boom, explosives. I don't even know how many minutes security forces died there. The other time a taxi was, was, was set ablaze in Boya. You know the number of kills we have had in Bamenda. You know in Manfe, you know in this civilians, uh, separatist fighters, uh, soldiers, and all the like. While these guys are creating factions, government is helping to add the factions again, and all the like. At the end of it, it is faction, faction, faction upon faction. Mm -hmm. It means that the system has gone wild. It is from kangaroo to plus kangaroo or kangaroo race to the power 10. <laughs> In short, it is kangaroo pro. <laughs> and we call it kangaroo plus. Because everything is fast falling apart. But one thing we must note is that in a guerrilla warfare, as Chibo Nagi said, Yaoundé, listen to me. You might think that you will create 2,000 factions and overcome this war. You will be blowing hot air. I got a viral video the other day, which I saw on social media, I cannot recover. But I saw guys still holding a, how do we call a, a rocket launcher. I said, I, I thought these guys had finished. And with the rocket launchers, they held it. It tells you that they are even still determined, even if the numbers are few. And with guerrilla warfare, you discover that when these guys, the Americans themselves, were in their guerrilla warfare, they realized that it could not go. And that's why they had to escape when they were fighting in South America. What will cause us to allow soldiers to be exploded anyhow? Allow amber fighters to be ambushed and killed. Allow civilians to be killed in crossfire. Shops to be set ablaze because they are angry that we have come, we have not shown us amber fighters, and now amber fighters have attacked us. When at the end, we will sit on a table. Yeah, would they listen? Whether you like it or not, whether we have 2,000 separatist faction leaders and wranglings, the end result is that we will one day sit on the table. I want to sit on the table. Only genuine persons.
will be on that table for joining business to come, which will accompany justice before peace and not peace before justice. Before justice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Far Elvis, for <laughs> retaining my mic for a long time. <laughs> I will now have to take Mr. Song. Uh, 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 Five is talked about a government which within one year you can have like eight leaders. That's a hyperbole, yeah? But we have uh, uh, Tapang Ivo, which we all know, whom we all know was one of the frontliners in this, uh, 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 a frontliner activist who now calls all these happenings and uh, signing in as an online coup d'etat. I should quote with his, his, his words, Ambazonia country is the only country where a president is sworn in, but all predecessors do not hand over the baton officially. <laughs> Can you comment <laughs> on the statement? Uh, I, will, I will come to that comment, but before I, I come to that comment, uh, Rita Motosone, you permit me to, to sure, make uh, sure. a comment. What is going on? I will tell you clearly that we know of the Anglophone marginalization. Mm -hmm. We know of the Anglophone problem. We know of the Anglophone question. We know of the Anglophone crisis. But what we don't know is the Ambazonia war. It is easy to fight what you know and than to what fight you what you don't know. Sadly enough, Ambazonia was born in Yaoundé. The intercourse took place at the presidency and the child was giving birth right in Yaoundé. And that is why we cannot fight Ambazonia from far. It happened in Yaoundé. It was born in Yaoundé. And I have reasons why I say it was born in Yaoundé. Why was it born in Yaoundé? Minister Paul Atanganji once said, there is no Anglophone problem. And you and I know there is an Anglophone problem. Mm -hmm. Where the child started, the president said, there are no issues. And he called those who revendicated for their rights terrorists. And I want to tell you that what has put Cameroonians or Anglophone Cameroonians against the government is verbal misplacement. From where we said, someone said there is no problem to where the President of the Republic called her own citizens or his own citizens terrorists, then the Ambazonians were given birth. Also, you will understand with me that the reason why this crisis is prolonging is because the government is so myopic about it. When I say myopic, it's because they are handling the crisis of 2016 and forgetting that what is happening in Cameroon has long overdue. Molan Joel Yutumbe, before he died, may he so rest in perfect peace, he said God had kept him to tell the government what to do before he dies and he had said everything possible that would have been done for this crisis to come to an end mm -hmm. the reason why we are here is because we keep looking at what happened in 2016 the laws even the president of the consortium uh barista agbobala said it on a sister tv channel mm -hmm. that today we are asking you people to talk about federation and the government is refusing there will come a time that you bring federation to the table and the people will refuse he was talking to yaounde and yaounde took the notes so if we are where we are today first yaounde is happy to see the factions because they survive by divide and rule but trust me the more faction we have the more difficult the problem is to be resolved. Because I want to tell you that even if we claim that this crisis is ending now, I want to guarantee you that another crisis will start. Because peace is not proclaimed. Peace is not decreed. Peace is an intercourse between truth and justice. On the side of the separatists, I am sure there is a lot of lies telling. There's a lot of scamming work. 
on the side of the government, there is still too much of lies telling and a lot of uh, uh, um, war of benefits going on. And then the international organization that has become more hypocritical, worst of all, African Union, that has remained sealed-lipped till now. Uh, coming back to your question, or uh, installation of several presidents, we know, <laughs> and I still believe, uh, from what uh, uh, Tapang Ivo said, Tapang Ivo, at the beginning of this revolution, when they finally seized power, because they did the first coup d'etat. Sure. <laughs> seizing power from Agbobala to Mark Beretta and uh, Tapang Ivo. Mm -hmm. I remember one of his famous words, a phrase he used, that was in 2017, that if Yaoundé does not remove his terrorist military from Anglophone Cameroon, then Anglophone Cameroon will move into Yaoundé. Those were things that were happening. And, of course, we realized that during the beginning of this crisis, adrenaline were, hi were high. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like uh, my brother Ndi Um said, in as much as we blame the separatist leaders of their too many factions, I want to tell you something that all the Anglophones are still in cause for this crisis. No Anglophone has diverted. Rather, those who were not even into it are adding. Because the way that the government has handled the crisis, what we are dealing with are the consequences, are the effects. And the fact that we have too many factions of separatists, there was a time that we had just five persons to deal with. Mm -hmm. There was a time that we had just uh, uh, Barrister Fontem, mm -hmm. uh, Agbobala, Tassang and Co, that we had just those people to deal with, and the government did not. There was a time that the government was asking a question, who should we dialogue with? But never asked the question, who should I arrest in Nera in Nigeria? They arrested Sisisiku. There was a time that the government organized a grand national monologue in Yaoundé. And the same people they arrested as leaders of the separatists were just a stone throw. And then they invited no names to come talk about the fate of the people. I want to tell you today that we cannot pretend. No matter how much we pretend, people like Sisisiko, Tassang, Wilfred, they still have a lot of credibility to talk to the Anglophones, Cameroonians, and they will follow. And if we keep ignoring them, it was until the government refused the peace way. Because I remember when Sisi Siku uh, was the leader of the, 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 the defunct Anglophone presidency, mm -hmm. he usually called on the people that peaceful negotiation. Until the government told him from Nigeria that people like Ayabacho Luka said, it is only fire for fire. The Derek, uh, Derek Ebenezer Akwanga said it was fire for fire that we are seeing this crisis today. So if they are having many pres uh, presidents, it, it could be that they have drifted from the fact that they should fight for the interests of the people and then they are not fighting for the interests of their bellies. Mm -hmm. But trust me, I said it to, during an interview I had with the European Union that there is somebody, there is a third party that is benefiting from this crisis. There is a third party that is benefiting from this crisis, and that third party does not want this crisis to end. Who is that third party? The third party could be the diasporans who have taken it as a scamming affair, as a money-making affair. The third parties could be some ministers in the government who said there is no anglophone crisis, yet receive international aid, international assistance to share to people who have crisis, and then the third party could still be the international organizations who are taking the opportunity to hit our heads together while stealing our natural resources. Okay, thank you very much, Derek. You mentioned something that uh, even if uh, 
uh, there are many problems and wranglings we still have anglophones who are very much bent on this uh, this uh, struggle so that uh, brings me now to ask <coughs> yes we presently we we of course have anglophones who are bent to, with this struggle even those whose children can no more go to school even those who cannot have any hideout even those who have lost their businesses but now uh, it's still it it, it it's a call for concern when you say people who are working for the liberation of the people don't consider the aspirations of those people these same anglophones who are bent on on seeing a change tomorrow want it to be done in a different way but i don't think that this method by which the uh, liberators or the, the the separatist actors are going about is the best for the people i'm talking after uh, uh, with, with with facts from many who say they are for the struggle but the system of the struggle now is not in their favor and of course it isn't you don't liberate me by killing me exactly if you kill me you are not a liberator you are a killer mm -hmm. okay you know <clears throat> this thing has made us to believe that um, a drummer cannot stand on his drum and play it. Mm -hmm. These people are standing on the drum and are pretending to be playing it. That is why you cannot get the echoes of the drum that is being played. Mm -hmm. And consequently, when the drummer sits and plays, it can only tear the drum, but the sound will not be heard. To talk about liberation, I will tell you that there are some liberators that we don't even know them as we speak in these studios now. Mm -hmm. Some people live in the cities, but they are fighters in their spirit. They are also liberators. Some people are praying every day for God to send them a Moses in southern Cameroon so that they can cross the river. You see, uh, the first problem is that the government called for the war. Mm -hmm. It's not a debate. I know that some people will say, tell me where the government called for the war. When the president declared a war against terrorists, of which I know that we are not terrorists because I am an Anglophone. I've never held a gun. Not because I don't have the means. Because I, I don't have the legal authority to use it. Okay? But he called for war with those who are holding arms, who are holding arms. Who are those who the arms? He <laughs> called them fighters. terrorists. Mm -hmm. They are not my words, though. They are the words of the president. President Pobia, who is very active on the field. You see him every day. You see, he called... <laughs> he declared war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dear father, Lord. You cannot be a president who is presidenting terrorists then you have failed in your presidency. How can it be possible that in 36 years of leadership, you were grooming terrorists? Yes! That, logically, it could be looked at it that way. Because these people you call terrorists are the people you have been their president for 36, 37 years. How come all of a sudden they became terrorists? You see, they played the magic rule of prolongation and by prolongation they gave birth like some Derek said a while ago the intercourse to put to birth something called ambazonia which i personally will say that honestly in all honesty till 2017 i never knew anything called ambazonia i knew of a suffering people mm -hmm. of southern cameroon mm -hmm. who has been suffering for long and that's why i started by saying that till date till now that we are talking a true and bona fide born and bred of southern cameroon even in a bush hiding in a city hiding under the bed for fear of guns somewhere as we are speaking now mm -hmm. is praying for a moses to let them across the red sea mm -hmm. As a loving citizen of this country, I am still using the identity card of Cameroon. You see, I still pay taxes to Yaoundé. 
even if Yaounde is using the taxes to fight us, we keep paying with the hope that things will change one day. Who told Yaounde that the consortium were not the right persons to dialogue with? You will discover that, in all honesty, the government was ready for war. Why? Because they have been used to intimidation and brutality to the level where they thought the gun could kill and silence everybody. But unfortunately, in the 21st century, there is no peace bullet. That bullet that shall bring peace is yet to be manufactured. Maybe after I must have died. I mean, we need to understand that in every family there are problems, Rita. Mm -hmm. But it takes the head of the family tact and procedure to quell down this problem. Mm -hmm. There are some problems that come to strengthen the family. The problem of Southern Cameroon was a golden opportunity to cement our relationship forever. It was a golden opportunity to challenge those who have gone ahead of us, who left with the impression that we were in a Jumba marriage, <laughs> to challenge the spirit. It was a golden opportunity to solidify or to rebuild a foundation for a Cameroon that shall last forever. Alas, Yaoundé regime opted for guns, and this is where we are today. And uh, I can tell you again in all certainty that the war is far from being over. It is having only a metamorphosis in the tact. Like somebody will say, we have only a pocket of resistance. These words came out three years ago. And we are on and on counting. The war is still raging. It is changing only an approach. And I think it is not yet over. The government of Yaoundé has everything it takes. Those sacred uh, people they have been sending to Europe to negotiate behind the back doors to see the Nzali firms, let me call it the names, that have failed and failed woefully. I would give this advice to Yaoundé if they like the tech. It is never too late to open a new page, but it could be too late to repair damages if you allow the damages to keep drawing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Look, listen. Please. Drop right. I still pay my taxes to the government of Cameroon because I am a Cameroonian. At least, even in the physical. I don't know what the spirit holds. But then, I still believe that I pay my taxes because I am a Cameroonian. And I want to think that a divided Cameroon that will give peace I don't have a contrary view. Mm -hmm. A united Cameroon that will live in peace, I don't have a contrary view. A federal Cameroon that will live in peace, I don't have a contrary view. Now, it is back to you, the government, to play their ball, the, the ball game well. Give the people the voice. Go to a referendum. In a referendum, Eric, uh, Ed, uh, what are they called? Eric Toto, mm -hmm. uh, Tapa Ivo, and the rest, they will not be there. They will not, their voices may certainly not come for the referendum. Give the referendum simply back to those who are in the Northwest and Southwest. It will facilitate the solution of this problem. I mean, the people will speak and they will speak louder in the voice, in the box of that referendum. It is too long a time that we have been dragging this thing. Let's do it simple. The simple thing is give the people the voice and let the, the, the voice of the people speak. speak for itself. Okay, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Uh, Mr. Noaku, we have equally following the the the, the swearing in of uh, Chris Anu as the new president of the Separatist Anglophone. As a new president of the Separatist Anglophone, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, looking at his swearing in, we have the uh, uh, former secretary, assistant secretary of state for African affairs, Sibo Nagi, who says, and I quote on his Twitter page, that for the Southern Cameroonian, for the Southern Cameroonian diaspora to have an impact on the struggle, it needs unity. 
otherwise the various governments in quotes will continue as a secular firing squad so surely they can agree on the outcome that everyone wants which is peace and uh, justice with the present happenings how do you think there is any unity which is going to lead to peace and justice you will have to unmute your mic elijah elijah we cannot hear you in the studio Okay, I'll surely come back to you when uh, my director will get back on seat. Seriously. So let me come to you, Mr. Far Elvis. Uh, tell us, with this uh, swearing in of new presidents every now and then, how do we see a unity of the people? Because we, uh, <laughs> in, they say, divided, we fall, united, we stand. And he, his leadership, just like that of the past leaders, is equally disputed. Is there any peace and justice in sight? Uh, the peace and justice could be looked at in relative terms. Some people will say that's the best way to go. Because maybe Chris Arnold was not agreeing with uh, Dr. Sakoe Kome. And that's why he has to form his own faction and his own presidency. We have the other lady who took over from uh, Dr. Sakoe Kome. Marianta. Marianta. We have Yerima from South Africa who is also a president. Oh. Dr. Yabacho is also a president. They are presidents, so and more are still coming. We welcome all of you to the presidencies. All of you come. We will stay in Boya and waiting for you all. But you see, uh, the issue of the presidents and all the like, uh, since as is now proven that we have very few journey persons who have a journey course by advocating for the rights of those in these two restive areas. The, the factions are mentioned in Ethiopia. Those are mentioned in South Sudan. Even those that were running in DRC headed by Laurent Kunda and a host of other rebel leaders. Those leaders were on the ground. Now, I don't refuse putting up presidencies. Please, we need even 20 presidents. What we need now is that let's go to the ground. Each president, come home and lead your battalion. Let me see you a president in the corner at the forefront with an AK-47 and a bazooka. Then I will know that your interest is not to collect money in the name of war draft, but your interest now is to take the bullet so that if I die, I die because I am a rebel leader. That one will begin to make some sense. Because I think that while we are getting the recent aspect of uh, Chris Arno, we had, we had, we're seeing what we call one uh, TV station for the course. I think now we have about three that are on board now. And each faction tries to put up his own TV, so he puts in place his own propaganda through his own TV channels. That's why the euphoria in watching those TV channels, what you go to do, you used to have guys who are their dishes that they will hide in the night, lower the volume in their houses only to listen to the channel, which was like an opium mm -hmm. to the people. But ask the question, how many of them are killed up because they get confused. <coughs> Three channels running with different approaches to the struggle. You start asking yourself, but where are the people standing? Every, because as I said, getting a faction is a common characteristic of conflict. But the difference now is that with some characteristics of the conflict, most of them move towards a particular direction. And that is why you see among the factions that some factions consider others as working with the government. Because they have looked at their lifestyle, you seem not to understand the direction they are taking. I will always tell Yaoundé that whether we have 
forces or not, separatist fighters or ambas are a creation of Yaoundé. Hear me well. A creation of Yaoundé. Because before 2016, nobody was ever courageous in the history of the English speaking to carry up weapons and start running after people. It did not happen. But in the course of the crisis and in the course of arrogance and the blatant use of force, who the government thought it was the easiest way to subdue the people, it has now undergone metamorphosis from stones, rubber guns, cutlasses, then guns, to semi-AK, to AK, now to record propelled launchers, and the next day we'll start hearing that they have jet planes flying. <laughs> Very possible. Yeah, one day, let me tell you, you can be joking like that. These guys can go one day and hit a deal with mercenaries. And we know how mercenaries function. You know what happened to Kutura Gimli of recent? If not that the mercenaries and their arrangements got foiled somewhere along the line, Obiadam and Bazaar would have been unseated. Because mercenaries have a simple way of functioning. There are multi-billionaires working in the world that when you move to them, and you enter a deal, I don't have money, can you help me remove this person? They survey your territorial boundaries and see what resources you have. If you agree, you can pay part, and part you come in, and after some time, they explain your resources to the period that they have plus their interest. You can imagine how dangerous it is mm -hmm. to hear that you now have mercenaries who are fighting. Yaoundé, if this thing goes further, I am not a prophet of doom. I am telling you under characteristics of warfare, that if you don't put it under control, don't be surprised that you start getting expatriates teleguiding these boys in the bush. And before you know it, you must start getting surprised on what could happen. We thank, we pray God we don't get to that. That's why anybody around the prime minister, I beg you, tell our father, Chief Dr. John Gute, that condition at Sheikh Kritika. Don't come and tell him that, no, Indian, we have done everything things are under control. It, no, no, no. Tell our prime minister the truth. the truth. That, Papa, I beg you, tell the head of state that, the way we're looking at this, this war has been size. We killed six armor fighters whom we put in the hospital in Kumbo, but they came after that incident and burnt the security post in Jakiri. It means that they are still active. Mm -hmm. Until security forces were running haters skater. I'm sorry to say that. Security forces... Permit me, oh, sorry. It's what I saw. So what does it mean? It means that if people could arrive somewhere and security forces take to their heels to reinforce before coming back, it means that the, their guerrilla warfare is fast becoming a threat. And I pray that we don't need to be losing lives. It is not our wish. This TV platform, African Media, is out to solicit peace. And if we think that the powers that be, I have told persons before, Rita, as I'm running up, if people in Yaoundé are serious, send your children who are in the army and the military to the war front. <laughs> the day a rocket propeller launcher removes the ears of one, you will see others say, man, so come see the affair like Syria. But now that the children of poor people, you and I, are the ones dying, I'm sure that's why they are very comfortable. Let us get government ministers and their children and their relatives. We send them to Mwa. We send them to Nkambe and our, our other areas that are a little bit complex, then we'll begin to see that there's every reason for us to stop the fighting, prevent further deaths. I say whether it is military, amber or civilian, it is the life of a human being that matters, mm -hmm. yet we are not producing AK-47. Why do you think that we don't have roads, as you see many times on, on, on screen, in the news channel and all the like? Yet we are buying armored cars every day. It is witchcraft. Because we have been able to sit down, we call Ayuk Tabe and Co. down. Uh, Ayabacho Lucas, down. Even the editor who's now blowing a different grammar, down. Anybody, down. I will say, what can we do to solve this issue? But we think that buying ammo cars, recruiting children 18 years, 17 years, 19 years, when those children are recruiting, you say they cannot vote. But they can find one, they can hold a gun. It means that at the end of it, the people that man the powers in Yaoundé, they no longer value human lives. Rita is bad to hear that. These are youths going. While the persons who are above who are living injury time are the ones sitting in their comfortable offices and say, Alezi, on veut la paix. You send 
I know I, I know how difficult it could be for a general, a new general in Bamenda. Mm -hmm. Because as he came to Rabuba, few moves, but the moves are not given. Now special forces are going to Bamenda. It means we are determined to continue the killing. And the killing also have called collateral damages. Should we sit and be calling for collateral damage where we can leave the general boobas, the general whatever, and come back to a table where all of us talk peace and justice? No, justice and peace, not peace and justice. No. Justice because as we kill persons, we will account for their lives when the war ends, unless you have died. If you have not died on the wheelchair, we will take you on the wheelchair and come to the special tribunal and you explain to us what happened, where you were, and why people were killed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fa Elvis. Hoping we can get back the sound of uh, Mr. Elijah Enoaku. So, Mr. Elijah, I'd like to hear your own take on Tibor Nagi's uh, uh, post or statement where he says that if the leaders are not united, then there can be no hope for peace and justice within the English-speaking regions of Cameroon. So that's following his post where he, he, he posted on his uh, Twitter page. And I would like to know uh, your own opinion. How do you think or is there any hope for peace and justice to return with the divide and rule system which is happening? The division system even is not even a divide and rule. The division which is happening within the Anglophone crisis as a whole with leaders popping here and there and all having different goals we should say they are not speaking in one voice and they have leaders who are equally disputed so what's your impression about this can you hear me now yeah. all right thank goodness all right um the first thing i want to say is this um we know i do not know if southern cameroon has been a curse from the beginning or not this is a similar thing that happened with Funcha and Indeli. When they went to their Manfei conference, instead of sitting down and agreeing on a third solution, they were fighting among themselves. They did not agree among themselves. The United Nations came in and gave them two options. And contrary to some politicians or some uh, historians that come online and say, oh, the United Nations, there was no um, appetite for the third option within the Southern Cameroon. That's not true. History tells us that a majority of the people of Southern Cameroon wanted neither Nigeria nor East Cameroon or the Republic of Cameroon. And there were disagreements among the leaders in the Manfred uh, Constitutional Conference. There was disagreement. Meanwhile, the populace were saying that, no, you go back to the United Nations. So when Foncha decided and said, OK, let's go to the United Nations and ask for more time to debate on this issue. The United Nations came back and said, you guys are waiting so much time. These are two options that you have. You either join Nigeria or you join the Republic of Cameroon. It's the same misfortune that we are having today in the southern Cameroon. But let me say this. This is not a conventional war. I'm speaking to the government that be. These people are disunited. There's no doubt about that. But this is not a conventional war where people are taking territories and then trying to secure those territories. This is a guerrilla warfare. And a guerrilla warfare is based on ideology. Let me tell all of, all of us, all of us in this platform now, those sitting in the studio and me sitting here, as a Southern Cameroonian, you have felt the pinch of marginalization at one point in your life. You have been called les, les ennemis dans la maison at one point in your life. You have been called a shakis of war at one point in your life. At one point, you've been forced to write an exam in French. So everybody feels the pinch, whether those that are fighting or those that are not fighting. People feel the pinch. That is why I started from the beginning by saying that people think that this war started in 2016. It did not start in 2016. It is just because people were you know, trying to use the force of argument and not the argument of force. But it wall over in 2016 because, you know, the government did what they did. And people say, you know what? We are tired of this. We are fed up. That is why they pick on arms. So in guerrilla warfare, there can be 100 groups. It does not kill the ideology. It does not kill the pain of that a southern Cameroonian has gone through. It does not kill what he or she has gone through over his life. They, it is still there. That is why the Vietnam War, the mighty America with all their machinery, they could not defeat the communists. They could not. Because this is an ideology that the people have lived in and they have believed in it. This is the prophecies of Endele that is coming true. Endele warned us. He said it. 
you are going to join the people who do not know law. You are join, going to join the people who will arrest you in the streets. You are going to join the people who are going to catch you and throw you in jail without any due diligence. He warned us. And this is why we are today. This is the same problem that's happening today. So let me say this, Rita. The government that be can Unfortunately, we've lost uh, contact with uh, Elijah, but let me take on you, Derek. So can you uh, proceed from where he was? Because I saw you nodding your head constantly. <laughs> so he, he, he talks about uh, there can be many groups or many leaderships within a course and it's still, it, 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 they still have the same objective. But is that what we have in the present situation of the Anglophone crisis? Um, Rita, permit me to say that you cannot kill an idea with a bullet. Mm -hmm. Bullets don't kill ideas. It's only a better idea that can, kill that can mm -hmm. bury another one. So the, the, the idea of separating Cameroon or the, 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 the myth of the separation of Cameroon is an idea. And the only way to, to kill it is to bring a better idea to the table. <laughs> I often say it frequently that round tables will solve problems better than round bullets. But Yaoundé thinks that round bullets can solve problems better than round table. Because wars usually end where they should have started. True. What am I saying? A war will end on the round table. It will end with a discussion it will end with a dialogue, and that is where we should have started. If we would have dialogued at the beginning, we would not be pointing guns at each other. Is it like we're always trapped in a situation where nobody wants to appear like the person who gave up on his own? Like Enwaku said, mm -hmm. the system of, although it is inherited from the West, the Anglophone and the Francophone, they are two different systems. Mm -hmm in the terms of education, law, and everything. So we, there is, we are not only fighting, there's an ideological fight, there's a systemic fight. Remember the Anglophones or the English-speaking people believe in accountability. Mm -hmm. You are accountable to the last franc. Whereas the French system, it's a porous system where embezzlement, bribery, and corruption is at the forefront. The solution of this crisis is sleeping in Unity Palace with the president on the same bed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you know, or should I be the one to remind you that when this crisis was still at the early stage, the bishops wrote an 18-page document yeah. to Yawunde. And in that 18-page document, what we call the anglophone crisis was dissected till the least the details of the anglophone crisis was given inside that 18 page document mm -hmm. it was sent to the presidency as a proposal to solve the malice what that is why i'm telling you that <laughs> mr president is sleeping on the solution of this crisis and People should not come and tell you that he doesn't know what the problem is. Because he was part of the delegation that was sent to investigate this problem. So, uh, yes, many factions are playing to the advantage of Yaoundé. Because Yaoundé will keep telling Anglophones that these people are no longer for you. And it is it could be true. But the few genuine people that are there, I remember when the bilingualism uh, commission went to Bamenda. It should be um, Honorable Jua, who spoke in the in, in the in the conference hall in Bamenda, and told the Musonge Commission that the Anglophone crisis, the Anglophone ideology, is in the blood. Mm -hmm. All of you sitting on that table, you might be sitting on that table sent from Yaoundé. 
But I want to tell you that despite the fact that you are on that table and you are an Anglophone, you are with us in the spirit. Because the, the Anglophone ideology is in the spirit. It is in the blood. And whether you pretend about it, so the several factions could be playing to the advantage of Yaoundé, but it is delaying the end of the crisis. Whereas, if Yaoundé wants this crisis to end tomorrow morning, it will end. Because they have at least 90% of the power. If uh, we decide today, Rita, to say that, yes, we have been fighting for too long. Because I will not go without telling you that the both parties are on high horses. The Ambazonians are on a very high horse and the government on, a, on another, another high, high horse. horse yeah. But the person who is suffering is a common man. It's you and I. Because mind you that when those ministers are going to Northwest, Southwest, they are being given mission well allowance. allowance, mission allowance, housing, okay. hotels, okay. and then they are giving amokas. And some of them even enjoy going there because those allowances are huge. So if the government will come down from her high, high horse and the, the other worrying factors come down from the high horse and say, we are realizing that upon all this bulletin, it is the people we think we are protecting that are suffering. Can the separatists come to the table? The unionists come to the table. The federalists come to the table. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you where the separatists are now. It is either separation or nothing. Where the federalists are, it is either federation or nothing. And where the unionists are, it is either unity or nothing. Or nothing. But trust me, if the three factions sit on a table, there will be compromise. There will be a center where they will meet. Because the moment there is ceasefire, mm -hmm. nobody will want to pick up the gun again. If we sit on the round table, look at each other, eyeball to eyeball and tell the, the the separatist fighters that you have wronged us in this way you have wronged your population in this way and you have wronged the people in this way and then the the the, 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 the government of the republic that you have failed your citizens in this the leadership you have decided to sacrifice your leadership because i i, I feel like it is far more honorable that somebody should lose power protecting life mm -hmm. than to gain power losing life but unfortunately what is happening is we have people who are trying to protect their power by losing life and the human life is very sacred the day that you decide to take another person's life is the same day that you are losing or you are supposed to lose your own life so whether it is yaoundi mm -hmm. whether it is a separatist fighter all lives matters. matter the anglophone lives matter the military's life matters and uh, mr far said something that I, I just really want to just throw a comment mm -hmm. mind you the president of La republic uh, the, the republic of cameroon has never been to southern cameroon since the war started he has never been to northwest or southwest to see what is happening and but for the for the son of one of the colonels or is a major that I learned that was killed in, in, in Kumba, in, in Kiliwini, none of those people who are high-ranking people have lost somebody in this war because they send their children to very calm areas. Some people prefer to be in the far north fighting Boko Haram than to be in the north. Because in the northwest or southwest, you don't determine when you die. At first, it was confrontational. Now, it's so painful to die when people are filming how you are going to die. Have you seen those boys, boys in the bushes? How they see, they say they are coming. Military cars are coming. There are three of them. Target the last one. And they are filming how you will die. Mm -hmm. And the person in Yaoundé sits and folds their arms and said, no, courage to the military. The, uh, I, it's an advice to the military. They can hear and at the same time, they cannot still hear. Our real enemies in this country are sitting in air-conditioned offices, putting on suits and tie. And until we rise up and understand that the real enemy, the real kankawom, the real kangaroos that are destroying the system 
are the one holding the yam and the knife. Then we will keep killing ourselves. Remember those that are dying are the poor masses. masses. They are the suffering people. You bribe your way into the military and you are sent to die for free. Happy death celebration. It's a... Uh... <laughs> It's, it seems funny, but it's not really like we are talking of all these. <laughs> you stated that the president himself has never been in any of these English speaking zones, but he would, I, I, I bet he would, he would, he would say he sent his prime minister. That is his right hand man down to the <laughs> Northwest and Southwest. Mr. Ndiu. Send them solution. Where is solution? <laughs> well, sending them there is not what uh, really matters to me, which is the outcome of sending them there that should count so so should and, we and uh you you you, you <laughs> before you take them uh -huh. you no others, i'm not taking i'm yeah, just you, you also <laughs> understand again that when he sends them at times they go very fast but it takes a very long time for them to arrive here one day <laughs> because till date i'm still imagine that our yeah, chief uh dr john Gute mm -hmm. is still in his car struggling to reach yaunde you know the road to babaju mm -hmm. is too bad mm -hmm. And so he's still struggling to arrive here one day so that he can tell the president the, president, the, 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 real, the real situation, situation on the of the road so that the road can be tired. So he's very fast in sending his voices, but the voices are always slow. very slow in getting back to your own day. But we should not forget that uh, President Bia is one of the first person who was ever sent to to southern Cameroon to bring a feedback to mm -hmm. Ahijo. Mm -hmm. This is memory link about Anglophone crisis. So he knows it more than you and I. Exactly. We are just reading the cover of the book. He has the content, but he has refused to read the content or to revise the content. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, this uh, uh, Anglophone crisis or the war in southern Cameroon is something that is very regrettable because even uh, the the eldest member of Senate who died a few years ago, mm -hmm. Senator Victor Mukete, rose up in that house in that Yaoundé and said it. He shouted. I don't want to re remind you with what he shouted. I don't know whether the gods of the truth touched his heart and he was forced to say the right thing in the wrong house where no writing should be said because we all know that in those houses nothing right should be said is a standing ovation it's like a standing ovation or a standing order of that house mm -hmm. he said it may so be resting in peace you should also be understanding that in this in this war uh there is one field uh, monologue friends invited themselves in yaoundé mm -hmm. discuss among themselves drunk very heavy and, uh, what, and uh, what was the budget of that national dialogue the budget was heavy my mouth cannot pr pronounce it you see they they, 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 they they drank very rich wine they shared brown envelopes and prior to this monologue or friendly encounter between the cbdm members they fooled the cameroonians that they were taking uh propositions mm -hmm. i want to remind you before you continue with your question that it once more points to the fact that Yaoundé is not ready for this war to end. If they want it to end by midnight today, they know what to do more than you and I. They have what it takes. Okay? They have what it takes. Am I communicating with you? You also understand that the clergy, the political associations in Cameroon, because as of now, you know my standard. There's no political party. Cameroon. The political <laughs> associations in Cameroon. You're talking of no political party. They are. They, 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 they their opinions were were solicited. Yeah. They gave all their propositions, mm -hmm. their proposal, including the clergy who had made a tour in Norway. And in all of that, it was written nowhere that the Anglophone Cameroonian wanted a special status. That is why I'm telling you that Yaoundé is playing the role of somebody who is given a ball to kick with a leg. He's struggling to bend down and kick it with a mouth, which is impossible. 
And we are seeing the uh, effects today. Mm -hmm. They choose to pass by the corner of the, the right person. We would have all rallied behind the government today to say that you invited Aya, dreaded Ayabacho, we should call him the way it is. <laughs> he refused to come. Mm -hmm. Tapa Ivo at that time mm -hmm. had a warrant of arrest hanging over his head. <laughs> the arrest, the and at that time, he was still having a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. Mark Barista, the same. same. Akwanga, the same. the same. A lot of them. Now, who did you call the dialogue to dialogue with? Because none of oh, those were there. You brought in people who grow up in their academic milieus punctuated by dismissals and at one point imprisonment to come into the dialogue. And you are telling us that the diaspora was present. They are not serious Rita. Until they get on a serious note to know that this war can end. And it can end if the right thing is done. Mm -hmm. That right thing is the truth. Okay. Tell one another. The truth the truth uh the bible says in proverbs 25 verse 14 people who promise or who made promises that will never fulfill mm -hmm. are like the winds and clouds that brings no rain he only has promised for so long <laughs> and no rain has been falling the rain will not fall if they don't shift from promises to start to doing action. the real thing mm -hmm. we need action and we are ready to accompany them if they do the right thing. Okay. We are ready. So okay. to speak. The blood of the innocent children that have been spilled in southern Cameroon who never hold guns. Mm -hmm. The Mami Apis who were roasted like Kokoyam. They never held guns. The Samsoyas who were, who were beheaded. They never took up guns. I mean, the sad memories are there fresh why are they fresh because the government has refused to accept that we have sad memories and we can clean them when somebody dies there is what we call i'll put in quote they cry die funeral ceremony it is only at a funeral ceremony in the african culture that it is believed that the departed soul can now walk free into <laughs> the land of the dead if not their souls remain being troubled here back on earth okay i just wanted to add to ask you to ask you now still talking about the presence of the president in any of the english uh, yeah, 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 uh, yes, regions yes. is it a matter of him coming physically or getting the right feedback and acting to it because some are still hooked up to the point that he has to come down to either no. the northwest or southwest when you say some you have one you are talking to one right now really? in front of you. Okay. <laughs> so is it a matter of his you physical presence one. or his reaction to feedback Look, from his... Uh, uh, Mr. Bia is not a president for Yaoundé on Womeka. Mm -hmm. He is a president for Cameroon. Okay. And if he's a president for the whole of Cameroon, we need to see... I need to see him in Fundong. Mm -hmm. I need to see him in Ginicom, Bello, Kwakwa. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. I need to see him in Mafe. I need to see him in Bachibo, Bafut. It is his country. Feel free. Feel free. After all, it is in Northwest that you were named Fun of Fun. Go back as Fun of Fun in Northwest, you will be welcome as such. The and in, in the, was inaugurated by Hijo. The hospital in Ginikon was inaugurated by Hijo. Now, if Mustabia goes back to Northwest, all the Chindas in Northwest, I think all the missing funds will be found so that they can come out to welcome and him. welcome him. Mm -hmm. Because as we speak, if everything actually was under control, people will not be running to Yaoundé with their constituencies in their bags, in their suitcase. Councils will not be standing in, in, in Northwest waiting for mayors. Unfortunately, birth certificates are delivered in a day in a suitcase. A birth certificate of a child born in Northwest, although I don't want to cite places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it shows that things are not under control. He is, again, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The the armed forces. forces. Mm -hmm. I want this war to come to an end. And I think the war has overstayed its welcome. It is time for the commander-in-chief <coughs> to put on his bulletproof and take the lead of the war. Because 
the experience of the commander in chief is different from the experience of a young man trained for eight months or for one year <laughs> and sent to go and die in Norway. Exactly. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Let's have uh, Mr. Nwaku is back. Uh, you had not finished your point, so Mr. Nwaku, tell us. Hello. Can Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> good, good. Okay. As I was saying, um, we have to understand. My message goes particularly to the government that be, the government that is in power. We have the government has to understand that this is not a conventional war. This is an ideological war. Somebody mentioned already in the studio. Call it Diongute. Call him Musonge. Call him what? If he had the free will to speak out, he would speak out against the government in Yaoundé. I'm telling you the truth. Every Anglophone feels the pinch of what they have gone through over these years. So it doesn't matter. Even those who are in the CPDM, those who are in government, they are secretly telling people that our hands are tied. Why? Because even in that government building, the way he's being looked upon, he feels the pinch of the marginalization. So this is more than a conventional war, and the government needs to take note. Number two, if you look at the war that happened in Sudan, over the years, the children became radicalized in such a way that if you talked of North Sudan in South Sudan, you are looked upon as a traitor. That is what is currently happening in the Northwest and Southwest. This war is dragging and is putting an indelible mark on the children that are growing up today. Because children are asking themselves the question, if this was happening in Ebolua, if this was happening in Yaoundé, would we be still talking about a war today or people will sit around a table and they're telling you, and it is registering in their mind that there are double standards happening in Cameroon. And the Southern Cameroonian is being looked upon as second class citizen. That is what is registering in the mind of these children that are growing up. That you tell me that children have missed school for five years. And it's not a, an emergency or six. And it's not an emergency for the powers that be to sit down on the table. The economy of Northwest and Southwest have been decimated. And it's not an emergency for the powers that be to sit down and discuss. We are losing $20 billion, almost, a, I mean, uh, France, almost a year. And the Northwest economy is completely Northwest and Southwest destroyed. And it's not an emergency for the government to sit down and talk. Again, it is registering into the mind of every generation of Southern Cameroonians. And the more this thing goes forward, and the more it lingers, the more you are radicalizing these children. Because I'm telling you the truth, when somebody has lost the father, he's lost the uncle, he's lost the brother, Nothing is left for what is left. He has the gun. He's going to pick up the gun tomorrow. So it is going to bite everybody. So it is not just something that we just say, oh, yeah, because we see people on TV, in Cameroon TV, whether you call it, I don't want to be calling TV names, who will tell us, only negotiate power the terrorists, only negotiate power the terrorists. It's only terrorists. Tomorrow, the same terrorist will be the one that has gone down your own child. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us understand as Cameroonians, that these things does not bode well for anybody, whether you are in government or you are in the separatist movement or whatever it is. If there is a problem in the house, you sit down and discuss. Let somebody mention Ethiopia. Let me just mention to you what happened in Ethiopia. The Tigri people in the north have always had a regional autonomy. And that's what happens. It's the same thing in Cameroon. When you redraw an autonomy from people who has always enjoyed that autonomy, they will rise up. But what happened when the Tigre people rose up, the government realized that. Even though the government had the upper hand, they could crush them at any time. But they realized that it is going to destroy the same people that they are fighting to rule over. They said, let's come together on a table. The president, Ethiopian president, went to the parliament and said, yes, I know that Tigre are the people that pick up arms against the government but let us sit down and discuss as Ethiopians. The government of Cameroon can do the same thing. You will call them terrorists today, but tomorrow you're going to sit down and negotiate with them. Nelson Mandela was called a terrorist, but he became the president of South Africa. You are calling them terrorists today, yes, but the people, 
that are feeling the pinch of what they are being what they are suffering in the world did not call Tibayamba a terrorist. They did not call a tank a contact a like a terrorist. They did not call even uh the consortium. They never called them terrorists because these people are living the painful life of a southern Cameroonian every day. You can call them whatever name you call, but at the end of the day, these people are going through a pain. So the government that be should sit down and look for a peaceful negotiation to this war because. You will not win an ideology through the battle of the gun. If mighty United States could not win Vietnam through the battle of the gun because it was a communist ideology that they were fighting for, you are not going to win people. This is a gorilla fight. You don't know where they come from. They just come from nowhere and shoot and kill and run away. So it is not going to stop anytime soon. So the government has to do everything to bring the people on the table. Yes, you can call Ayub Tabi a terrorist. You can call Tassan a terrorist. You can call a whatever chief who a terrorist, but at the end of the day, you have to sit on the table with these people and discuss. If you love the lives of people in the Northwest and Southwest, you will do it even for them. Because sometimes president negotiate not because they feel that they are, are weak or they cannot win the war. They negotiate because they see the colossal impact of that war on their people and they say, no, I cannot allow law to continue to shed like this. I will come down my high horse let us discuss this thing and see a solution. That is what I am calling on Yamunde to do. Because again and again, you are not going to win an ideological war with the battle of the gun. The Southern Cameroon has felt this pinch for a long time. And I'm telling you, the government that be, if you give your ministers the opportunity tomorrow, that is a free, fair environment for everybody to talk. Those same ministers will speak against the government in Yamunde. I'm telling you the truth. Who has not gone through les ennemis dans la maison, les chiens qui s'aboient? When they call that, the ministers are not excluded. Everybody is included in that whole lump and they feel the pinch. So therefore, government of Cameroon, please come to a negotiation table and resolve this problem. Thank you very much, Elijah. I, I, I feel how passionate you get when you talk about this problem and that is actually the passion with which most of our guests who get into this studio take to handle the problems of cameroon to handle the problems of different countries in africa to handle the problems of africa itself thank you very much uh, mr elijah now gearing towards the end of uh, today's program let me hear from you uh, mr fire Elvis. yeah we are already gearing towards uh, the end unfortunately so <laughs> Kangaroo stories can go on and on. On and on and on. I have faith in you. So now we have uh, some of these uh, frontline uh, separatist leaders who said they are waiting for the Swiss mediated dialogue or intervention before they can equally stop uh, their de decisions of uh, 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 Black Monday, ghost towns, <laughs> and no going to school. But it seems like they are actually not doing anything about it for Swiss to intervene in this matter, says one of them, Eric Tato. And the government equally doesn't seem to want a, a Swiss intervention in this matter and thinks the military system is the best. When you give me an example of Eric Tato in the whole issue, I start getting getting confused. If you tell me that Ayuk Tabe said this or some other persons, because they are joining persons in this issue. Mm -hmm. I must be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know why we are looking at Eric Tato making him to become so important in the issue when he's becoming controversial overnight. Mm -hmm. But then, I, I, I think that with the issue of the of, 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 of taking a look at how it, it can be resolved, uh, you would bear with me. When I told Yaoundé that this thing is simply metamorphosizing, if you don't hear the sound of the gun, don't take it for granted because the guys might be calculating to come back. Last week, week before last, Mm -hmm. We know what happened between my 14 and my 16. Mm -hmm. That the guys came there more than 100. People in these areas were taken aback because they thought the guys had all been killed. Mm -hmm. And they were asking, who said you want to come out today? <laughs> and I tell you that the gun shot closed down Boya. Now look at it con con look at it controversially. That even some proponents of hate speech mm -hmm. who said by the carry with their head. I, for one, could not understand that the scenario of the two weeks ghost town, Boya, became hot to respect. While Bamenda activities were moving on within the day. And Bamenda, 
They are watching what I'm talking about. They are watching me. That I could get images that people said, I saw images, activities going on in Bamenda. Wild Boya, Munya, my 14, Mutemen was granted after that shootout. It's to tell you that the silence of guns does not mean peace. Peace, yeah. Yaunde, hear very well, though, because some of you are sleeping on your brains. Now, if you look at it, the issues of whether we should move on in a particular dialogue or not, one thing is for sure. If they respect the principles of conflict resolution, which I've been preaching for over five years, we will no longer be talking on this grammar of yam done, yam not done. Now, on the issues of Swiss talk or no Swiss talk, Yaounde, we can help you solve this problem. Oh. Sit down, be blow hot grammar. We can help all of you sitting there and watching us as if you are watching a, 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 a movie. Now, what can we do for you? Make it clear that if you want to discuss with persons, don't say there's no taboo subject. You fail on arrival. This one says I want Swiss talk. This one says I don't want Swiss talk. Say no trouble. Let us all meet in a neutral venue with a neutral person to be a mediator, accepted by both of us. If we say let's go to Ghana, Yaounde, the money you gave to people to go and be gallivanting on the corridors of Europe, America, and they come and tell you that they have done what the Poland have done, get that kind of money and ferry those who say they cannot move to where they have proposed. Give them nice hotels. Let all of us sleep in a good hotel with the mediators, middle persons. You begin to blow grammar. That will be the first phase of it. When they sit by the time they are saying that, are we for this or that? Let the first thing be done that they come together. Like one of the panelists said here, the moment the government put in place a neutral platform, without you calling the CPDM accolade and elites to be the leaders of this so called kind of negotiation, because they are the root cause of where we are. A man fits fat in a constituency. He comes to you and tell you everything is under control. This is time I want Yaounde. Those who said the case is under control because there were gunshots in Boya and even a taxi was set ablaze and other things and uh, saw a passenger shot who went under intensive medical care in, Bakfu, in, in, in Mutengene. Those people should be arrested who said things are under control because it means they lied. But if the government is not arresting them, it means the government too is a friend to those who say things are under control when they are not under control. We will not want losing any lives. Way forward. Yaounde, listen. Do these things we are telling you because the day you see a strange helicopter in your periphery, a warship in your periphery, you will begin to call for me and tell me that second of Mr. Avedi, c'est comme si c'est vrai. Oh. That time I will no longer be there because I will take my own first available flight to where I'm going to. <laughs> they will know how the grammar will be taking place. I have told you. Okay. Oh. Okay, thank you, Firebees. Thank you very much, a political analyst and a member of the MRC party, to be precise. Yeah. To be precise, <laughs> as Mo Professor Maurice Camto keeps on saying, end the war in the Northwest, Southwest. Yet we went to, uh, we keep adjoining cases with our militants who are in prison. When we say we are in a kangaroo court, people are on the street, peaceful protest. C220. Every day keep adjourning. Are you looking for an evidence as if they went and killed somebody in the night and they are looking for evidence to put there? <laughs> no. That is the kind of kangaroo system and confused we have. Begin to be confused. One day, confusion will confuse all of you in Yaoundé. <laughs> okay, hoping that your members are going to be liberated. Let me hear last word from you, Song Derek. What's the watch word? What's the way forward for English-speaking Cameroon as at this point in time? Uh, Thank you very much, um, Rita Mutosone, for inviting me to this sure, uh, prestigious program that dissects problems facing Africa. Uh, I want to say that the multiplicity of the factions may complicate the crisis, but it does not guarantee the end anytime soon. That one is for sure. And you cannot put off fires, fire by using dry leaves. It may only go off for a time being, and when he wants to come back, it will double. And when you deny the existence of a known problem, you unconsciously or consciously invite unknown problem. And it is quite difficult to deal with unknown problem. You can better solve the problem you know. 
for the anglophones whether it is self-acclaimed leaders or acclaimed leaders or jointly acclaimed leaders the moment the interest of the people misses the center stage mm -hmm. you you lost it all if you are fighting for the people i i feel embarrassed when I'm, I'm, I'm harassed by a military person. But I feel more embarrassed when it is an Ambazonian, so-called, or a separatist fighter that harasses me. Because we cannot fight against a system and become worse than that system. So a word to a wise is sufficient. The, 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 the separatist fighters need to reflect on themselves mm -hmm. that when the crisis started, People usually call them our boys. And today, some people call them those boys. Mm -hmm. Question, what went wrong? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Son Derek, for your last word. You're a political analyst and also a member of the civil society. Thank you. I, like, I would <laughs> like to have a concluding statement from you, Mr. Zhu. My, my concluding statement will go to three categories of people. The first one is to the self-acclaimed diaspora leaders. I was not in the conference where people were designated to lead the Anglophone cause. And I don't share your views. I mean to those, those scammers who are there. Because, like I said, there are people who live in the cities who are fighters in their in the spirits. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Those are the real Anglophones who are able to carry the cause to the end. That's one. So repent. There's time for repentance. Two, the government. Giving up <laughs> has, easy, has never been a weakness. You can give up your bad faith because the government of Yaoundé have been thriving on bad faith. You can give up the bad faith, employ good faith. Things will come to normal. Mm -hmm. Still to the government because I hold the government more than I hold those I don't know. Which is a government I know. I pay my taxes. I use the ID card of my country. I have been saying this and I will repeat it again. The first and urgent problem that should be solved in Norway and Southwest now are the fake Anglophone elite class. Look, this is what you should do, Yaoundé. All those people who are running around in Yaoundé with suitcases in the name of Anglophone elite, send every Anglophone elite back to his or her community with a task of ending amber before getting back to your own day. Any of them who fails to stop amber activities in his own locality should be arrested and never get back to your own day. They are the ones provoking all what you are seeing on the field. This is for their safety, your own day. And I think it is time for Mr. Bia to know that even at 100, they can commit a fall. Mm -hmm. But the last hour before you are dead, you can repent. Sure. We have always loved you. We still love you because we cannot create a human. We think you can stencil your, your name into the golden books of Cameroon history by writing the wrongs of yesterday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nziu Emmanuel, co-founder of the New Era for Africa. Is Mr. Elijah still there to give us his quick conclusion statement? You mean? <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Okay, um, you guys just mentioned about the Swiss talks. I just want to remind you that um, a communique came out from the government that be just a few days ago rejecting the Swiss talk and asking the Swiss to look at the major national dialogue. So there's no discussion about the Swiss talk. That goes back to show you that we are not dealing with a government that's ready to solve the problem. We're dealing with a government that thinks that there is a weakness in those who are fighting, and they can exploit that weakness to crush them down. But as to the separated leaders, again, I refuse categorically to dignify them over the TV and call their names whoever. They do not represent anybody. These are scammers and the people that are just there to enrich themselves. But again, to the government, there might be 1,000 separatist movement. It does not kill the ideology. It does not kill the pain that the Southern Cameroonian is going through. It does not kill the problem that they have gone through. 
Look into the pain of the people. If you love the Southern Cameroonians, if you love that the people decided to choose Republic of Cameroon and not Nigeria, it is because they felt that we can live together as brothers. If you know that brotherliness and you believe that that brotherliness still exists, look into the problem of these people. Come down from a high horse and let this problem be solved because you are not going to solve it through the battle of the gun. Thank you. Noako, researcher with Leeks University on African Development. And uh, it's your own point of uh, conclusion that brings us also to the end of today's edition of the Pan-African Debate. We had on the panel, Mr. Andiwum Emmanuel, Far Elvis, Song Derrick, and also you, Mr. Elijah Noaku, joining us uh, via video link. It was a pleasure to have you all trusted and uh, glued to your TVs this afternoon to hear what uh, we have to say and our own voices to the problems of Cameroon and Africa at large. And with that, I'll tell you, happy weekend and see you next week for new editions of Views on the Continent and the Pan-African Debate on your Pan-African Television. Bye-bye.